We're here at AM Hydraulics in Hockley in Birmingham to find out about their new machines, new investments, and also how they invest in people, and also the obvious engineering knowledge. I'm continually impressed by the expertise you can see in these four walls. Let's go and have a look inside now. Follow me. Now they've obviously the uh, AM Hydraulics. They invest in people and assets, and it's obvious when you start looking around this place how incredible their engineering expertise is. But I mean that's obvious from the fact they've been going for 44 years. In June, they were started in 1978 by Lakshya Singh, who's still here. Bless him. He was in the he was in the reception, uh, just just telling me about the company just now. And they were started in 1978. He started with one manual mill turn machine thing and now look what they've got don't look at that we've got an NDA on one of these parts here so they, their name is Hey M Hydraulics but I was kind of having a uh, I, I was quite interested that they don't actually just do hydraulics anymore they used to do piston tubes piston heads hydraulic parts but now I mean massive fabrications massive turn parts they're in they're in industries such as oil and gas in defense it's it's amazing that the level of the stuff they do here so if you've got any parts you need doing for a big oil and gas project Come to AM Hydraulics, they don't just do hydraulic parts. Look at this, big fat vertical borer, just invested in this, installed in September of last year. Another big fat vertical borer, so this was, uh, this was a Toshiba 2E200 uh, supplied by Leader CNC. Absolutely love it, replaced one of their old Webster Bennett's, which they've still got a Webster Bennett down there, but this is great, it's got live tooling, reduces bottlenecks on their horizontal borers. Let's go, come on Chloe, let's keep going. So, Again, Ki Hyung. So they've got three Ki Hyungs. They've got one with a four meter uh, X bed, one, uh, two with a three meter bed. Now this Ki Hyung is doing a big fat mining part. It comes in like this. Look at that forging, Jesus. Massive forged ring. What is that like? 400 millimeter? No, 800 millimeters. It's almost a meter diameter. They then turn a bit of it down. But you see this big fat groove in here. They were turning down this groove. It was taking ages because they had a massive, I mean, look at the depth of that. They had to have a massive, it's about half my MTD card. They had to have a massive grooving tool uh, and it was vibrating a hell of a lot. So they couldn't rough it out so much. What they did instead was rough out this groove on the Ki Hyung, go and turn it, put it back on the Ki Hyung to finish it. So this Ki Hyung, versatile for roughing, finishing, any operation you want to throw at it. Three plus two, uh, indexing head, two and a half degrees. They're now roughing out this big fat steel, then big long indexable insert. I'm amazed. They've got three of these Ki Hyungs. It's obvious why. I'm also going to grab Stuart here. Now, Stuart, you're the engineering manager. Come over here. Come over here. So we're going to talk about, you've got big fat Huat Shan here, big lathe, another Ki Hyung. Let's not talk about the Ki Hyung just yet. What are you doing on the Huat Shan right now? Um, turn components. Um, the advantage of having the slant bed lathe is the amount of power that can produce the rough out. So it roughs out a lot quicker. And, and the accuracy level is really good on it as well. So you guys invest in a lot of machines here in AM Hydraulics and a lot all the time you're buying new machines. Yeah. Why is that? How do you do it? Is that, is that the driver for your, for your growth, do you think? It has to be, doesn't it? Because uh, you get left behind if you don't invest. And uh, there's a constant investment throughout the years where one machine gets tired, it gets replaced with one that's uh, more accurate, more powerful and a lot quicker. It's a win-win, you get more space in your workshop floor as well. What about investment in people? How does AM Hydraulics invest in people? Well, we've got, an, we've got an apprenticeship scheme where we try to take on a number of apprentices a year. Um, currently got four or five at the moment. A couple in turn, a couple on machining centres. Um, most of them go to day release college, you know, and that, that, but they're learning on the job as well. Keep, keep them interested in the job and, that, and, that, and the rewards come back to you. Brilliant. The rules come back to you every time you employ an apprentice. Thank you very much, Stuart. I'm going to have a quick talk to Jersey okay. right now. Okay, mate. You carry on. It's brilliant. Jersey, can I just ask you a quick one? What do you like about running this lathe? Uh, I like actually everything. 12 to read station, C axis, uh, good milling on a uh, high speed. Brilliant. What are you doing right now? Uh, I'm doing a spindle. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers, cheers. So here at AM Hydraulics, they've got at least eight engineers who used to be apprentices, they were trained here, they're now full engineers here. There's such an environment of, of knowledge sharing, of mentorship that goes along with investment in people, investment in machines. We're now going to talk to Simran uh, and ask her what her experience has been being an apprentice here at AM Hydraulics and, and what experience she's had being mentored and learning from this fantastic facility. So Simran, you're an apprentice here at AIM Hydraulics. Yeah. What was your first day like on the job? Uh, my first 
first day was pretty hectic. I came in here at seven in the morning, they got me everything, and um, they sent me up with a trainee coordinator. I had no idea what I was doing, so I had no experience whatsoever. And I just, I was with him for the entire day and I shadowed him while he was milling a face. And he was explaining things and half of them just went over my head. But he did very well. I learned a lot by the end of the day. <laughs> I bet now you know, you understand those phrases yeah. and those words <laughs> and these, these strange engineering terms that people use every day a lot more now. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's the most interesting thing that you've learned over your time here? Um, I spent a week in the fitting room and I learned how an entire hydraulic cylinder fits together and sort of the purpose of it and everything like that. It was very, very interesting. What I love personally about this, this, this profession is that you, some people might look at like, for example, that, that chip, chip, chip conveyor over there and they might look at it, it looks like this big dumb piece of metal, but so much engineering Very work. intricate work, yeah. Exactly, even for a, for, a, for a conveyor, so much design work thinking has gone into the design of these things. And with this, this is the only way to learn about it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what draws you into engineering? Most people think it's a dirty, uninteresting subject. I think it's, it can be dirty, but it's most definitely not uninteresting. What draws you to engineering? Everyone really looks at the big picture things. So uh, I did a scheme in my school where I looked at submarines. Um, and I learned a lot about how sort of smaller stuff works together. And it's quite interesting to see how everything needs to be very, very exact. And yeah. And it has to work together. To if work it doesn't together. work, it doesn't work. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a right answer and a wrong answer. Yeah. And have you got a mentor here at AIM Hydraulics? I do have a mentor here. His name's Matt. His name's Matt. Okay, <laughs> lovely Matt. Matt the mentor. Shout out to Matt. So how do you find the mentorship model of learning? It's a lot better than sort of having one teacher teach sort of a group of people. It's a lot more one-on-one -on -one and personal. So if I have a problem, I can go straight to him. And he explains it in a way that I particularly understand. Um, I've grown to know sort of what I need and when I need it. If you had a piece of advice, uh, maybe for one of your friends who looked at maybe one of these videos and sort of thought, saw these, these cool massive metal parts and they wanted to get into it, what would your piece of advice be? Um, I would say experience, uh, knowing what you want to do. So I was mainly focused on sort of designing and the CAD CAM. When I came here, the, my first day they put me with someone working on a machine. I it's didn't a totally different it could experience. Be that interesting. Yeah. So yeah, it was completely different. And I quite enjoy it now, yeah. I didn't think I would, but yeah. Okay, would you suggest if someone was gonna be looking for an apprenticeship or looking to go do some work experience somewhere, what do you think the qualities of AM Hydraulics have that uh, you wanna look for in another company? I would say they're a lot more focused on their youngsters. They give them a lot more chances to do bigger jobs. Um, and they sort of set you off with someone. So you always supervise, so it's very hard to sort of make a mistake, get off track. You're taught very, very well. Uh, you gain a lot of experience. And they sort of set you up for either a full apprenticeship or maybe just a couple of months. So they give you a chance. And everywhere you walk on the shop floor, there is some fantastic engineering going on. Not just uh, turning down big parts, not just finished machining, rough machining. They've got a massive fabrication here from a steel works, which they're boring out. Uh, it's been ripped out of the steel works. They're boring all of the, some of the holes out which they overbore, they've got brass or steel liners that go inside the bores. They've also got all the welds on this, uh, on this part here. They've all been sprayed with some white paint. They mix uh, pink dye and paraffin. Apparently the paraffin evaporates off, the pink dye goes into the cracks. It shows any weld defects in the part as well. So they're overboring, they're checking these weld defects, they're doing NDT all in place on this massive, heavy horizontal boring machine. I mean, it's just, this has got a fourth axis as well, so they actually this fabrication will come out after they've bought it, it will spin around, and they can maintain those tolerances as well. So everywhere you look, big machines doing really cool stuff. And another thing I absolutely love on the shop floor, when these guys are in their downtime, they're still doing some fantastic engineering. Look at this Darth Vader helmet. On the right hand side, you see the semi-finished passes you get from the ball nose. But on the right here, I mean, this looks like to me someone's polished it. It looks like a bronze sculpture that someone's polished. They've not polished this. This is just from the ball nose step overs. They must have had like a cost pipe of like, I don't know, five micron or something ridiculous. Absolutely lovely. I would like to say it's a piece of engineering, but I think it's actually more like a piece of art. But anyway, as we always say in Swarf and Chips, keep those spindles turning.